It gives you encouragement. But if you'll put your faith with it, if you put your faith with it, then you can actually make that that hope come into reality. And no longer you're no longer you know seeing a picture, you're there. You're you follow me. The three things in law always exist, faith, hope, and love. Three things that always exist, faith, hope, and love. God's training you for eternity, and, and throughout eternity, you'll always operate. Even though you're you're in heaven or you've come back, you're brought back in a new body at the resurrection, you'll still always operate in faith, hope, and love. Love will be your motivation. Your hope is is, is that picture, that dream. That, that vision God gives you. And he'll, and he'll give you visions in, when, after you're in heaven and after you've come back. When they're, and you, are, you still will operate that way because He made you a creator. You're not the creator, but you're a creator. And that's the way you create. You create by having a vision and, putting your, and then you put your faith hold that vision and it, it brings it into, into this realm. It brings it into the realm of reality. And it's all motiv motivated by love. It's motivated by a desire to help other people or to, or to please the, the Father because you love Him. Amen? You know, John said this in, in the, one of the letters in the back. He said, you, you've heard it this way. He says this. He said, Beloved, I, 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 I wish or desire that you prosper and be in hell even as your soul prospers. How many of you ever heard that? You heard that? <clears throat> you know, in Greek, we, we put that into English. <clears throat> if you look at the original language, a lot of things, things go backwards. But look at it this way. <clears throat> as your soul prospers, beloved, as your soul prospers, beloved, you're going to prosper and you're going to be in hell. Amen. You hear that? As your soul prospers, because that's not some word that God gave you, as your soul prospers, beloved. You don't get to have to call yourself the beloved. You're in the beloved. You've been in Christ. Amen. Beloved, as you as your soul prospers. Now what soul prosperity? I gotta get off of you. <laughs> soul prosperity is this. One thing that makes a pro who, who if you have you ever heard that they're a good soul? Oh, they're a good soul. Or, or a good person, a good man, or a good woman. Does anybody know a good man or a good woman? Are you out there? Come on. What is one qualification of, that you think about somebody that you call a good man or a good woman? What do they have in there? What do you what what's something about them? Don't they have a, a, a loving heart? Yes. Aren't they forgiving? They don't hold a grudge. Huh? They don't hold a grudge. They're, they, they're, they're kind to people. They're giving to people. They do good stuff for people. Are you out there? Yeah. Think about it. You think about somebody you consider to be a good person and think about what they do. Well, that person has got a prosperous soul. They're, they've got a large soul. They, their heart's been enlarged by the Holy Spirit, by the Word of God. They, their heart is just getting bigger and bigger. That Their heart is soul. Their spirit. You understand the soul. And, and, and because they have that, that heart that they, they do, that what do they do? They do stuff for, for other people. It doesn't mean they've got to go their whole life just giving, you know, sacrifice and never have anything, never enjoy. That's not right. God don't want you to do that. <coughs> if you give, it's given unto you. Good man's and pressed down, shake it together, run an old man, we'll give unto your bosom. Come on. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. But the whole thing just starts out. It talks about, and Jesus says, and that passage says, give. He said, give. He said, give. He said, if somebody does something wrong to you, do something right for them. That's a prosperous soul. Somebody takes something away from you, give them, give them twice. You know, you know the story of the stuff that makes you mad and hear it? <laughs> somebody slaps you, turn it on cheek. I don't believe in the winning getting that, but I don't believe that doesn't mean you don't defend your family. But, but a prosperous soul. Amen. Amen. So as your soul prospers, what happens? God says this. He said, he said you're going to prosper. He's talking about the finances. Yeah. And He says you're going to be in hell. You know the major cause of health, of health problems? 
Yeah, well, it's stress. That's fear. That's the un un unprosperous soul. That's the soul that's fear. Exactly. That's right. no condemnation in it. We're not here to condemn. But I'm saying just to see the reality of it. If you're fighting sickness <coughs> a lot and you're having problems, there, there's usually, and I'm not denying the fact that that's a physical thing. I'm not a Christian scientist. <laughs> there's a physical thing, but your soul will affect your body. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so you can so learn some of the greatest, and that's why some, some people learn the greatest lessons of their life you know, when they're sick. Mm -hmm. And that's why people get the crazy idea God made you sick so He gets you less. I don't believe that. It's not biblical. God didn't have to make you sick. If, you, if something's wrong, you'll, you'll you know. Now, I've been sick, so I can say that. Yeah. Amen? Right. I've been real sick. And, and, and the root of it, get past the physical part of it, get past the goofiness of, of my behavior and stuff, you get that root, there was a soul problem. There was a heart that couldn't forgive. That, that I would say couldn't because God put forgiveness in me. It wouldn't forgive. Mm -hmm. A heart that held grudges against against the people. A heart that that. And I'm not saying this is the only reason people get sick. I'm just saying me. All right, say me, me. Richard. You say Richard Paul. You. <laughs> and if if you continue that way, listen. If you continue that way, then your soul it, it, it gets impoverished. It loses. See, when, any, when anytime you push a person out of your life, you just you just lost wealth mm -hmm. because people are in our lives because God brought them into our lives to increase our life. You know, I know some of, some of the people we got in our lives we, we, we wonder if God's gift. But nevertheless, they walked there for a purpose. You, the worst jerk in the world that's in your life, can have a purpose. They can, they can give you something to uh, some weight to exercise your love muscles. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. That's why I said, in everything, give thanks. For it's the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. Amen. He said, give them hope. So I want to, the Lord wants to give you hope or, or, or increase your hope today. Now let's look at Ephesians right quick. We ain't got much time. Very quick. Ephesians 1. So what cut that heat off? <coughs> Ephesians 1. Verse 18. You got your Bible? Yeah. Paul, this is the Apostle Paul praying for the church at Ephesus. He said, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you will know what is the hope, say hope, hope, hope of your calling. What are the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints? And what is the surpassing greatness of His power towards us who believe he goes on and says, These are in accordance with the working of the strength of His might, which He wrought about in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and seated Him at His own right hand in the heavenly places. Amen? Yeah. Paul said, I'm praying right now that you understand this, that the eyes of your heart, your heart, your heart, not just your mind, your heart, understand this, that you have a hope of a calling And he goes on to say that, that you that you're is God's inheritance. And he goes on to say that, that, that because that's this great power, this resurrection life, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is available to you. Say, say me. 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 That believes. Yes. Not now, but believe. He said, I'm going to go real quick because you'll share this about hope and call it. He said there's he said, I want you to understand the hope, hope of your calling. Hope is defined this way. It is a confident expectation of something happening. It's a com you're confident that it's going to happen. You're, you're, you, can, you can hope that I'm going to let you go in just a little bit. <laughs> but you can be confident because I'm just I can only last so long. I'm gonna, I'm gonna quit. You can be confident that I'm gonna let you. You will not spend the night in this building. <laughs> now, if the Holy Ghost falls, yes. we won't want to leave anyway. Amen. Amen. But he, but Paul said, I want you to understand the hope, the confident expectation of your calling. Say my, my 
calling. Let me, let me clarify. Since you church people, most people think this. <clears throat> and I know some of you don't. You're, you're, you're far in vain. <laughs> but when you talk about calling in church, most people cringe because they think God's talking about calling them into the ministry. To be a preacher or be a missionary. There's the only two things most people in church know that you're called to do. Be a preacher or a missionary. And, and we don't want to go to, to the darkest continent of Africa and be eaten by a lion. So we know we don't want to be called to do that. So we'll settle for being a preacher. <laughs> Give me the darkest corners of Africa any day. <laughs> All you got there? So we need that what you're supposed to think when you say, yeah, I've got the call. I've got the call. Mm -hmm. God's calling me. You say, well, you feel, you feel a deep calling. If you get in the presence of God very long, you're going to sense a deep calling in your, in your heart. And then you're going to freak out because your mind don't know, don't understand. I'm going to educate you right now. That don't mean he wants you to quit your job and go to ministry. Because we're all calling to ministry anyway. Right. Right. Ministry just means to serve. Yeah. To serve the Lord. Amen. Some people end up in this like this. And I advise you, stay away from it if you can. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> uh, not that I love it, but that's all I can do. Now listen, he said, he said that your calling, I'll, I'll, I'll read you the definition of calling. In the, in the language this was written in, it's, it's the word klesis. <clears throat> or klesis. And it's got a, it's a, it's a, a call, it's an invitation. But this is, this is, a, is a part of the definition that, that struck my heart. It is a divine invitation. You know, divine, that means God. It's a divine invitation to embrace the salvation of God. Now listen to, we, that's all we'll talk about your calling is a divine invitation to embrace. That means grab a hold of it. When I embrace my wife, I know she don't go up to her. Mm -hmm. I embrace her. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hello. I embrace her. I hold on to her. She knows that, that I'm embracing her. You, you follow? There's no doubt about it. He says, a divine invitation to embrace the salvation of God. But y'all ain't thinking. Start putting your thinking on that. Mm -hmm. It's a divine invitation for you to embrace. Now, how, how the way you embrace the things of God is by faith. Amen. The, whole, the, the way you embrace the things of God are by faith. Amen. Say it with the way I embrace right. the things of God Amen. are through faith. Faith. That's believing, speaking, or acting, or giving. Right there. You learn something when you pay attention. Your calling is the divine invitation for you to embrace the salvation of God. Now, we say that now, since we're talking, we're in a, a, a church culture, most people, when they hear the word salvation, the first thing they think about is to get born again, right? Right? Mm -hmm. And that's the limit to, to most people's concept of salvation. Thank God for you. You got to be born again. You never see the kingdom. You never enter into the rest of it. Thank God for the new birth. Amen. But that's not all salvation means. So the divine calling to embrace the, the, the salvation of God, first of all, is to embrace His salvation that comes through the, the death, burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. I embrace that. Boy, I got a hold of that. He died for me. Amen. Amen. My sin, everything that was in me was on that cross. My healing was on that cross. Everything on that cross. And then He, raised, he was raised again to, 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 to verify and to, to justify me in the sight of Almighty God. I got a hold of that. I embrace that. My Amen. Amen. That's not something that ever slips out of my heart because I know it. You got there? Mm-hmm. But there's more to salvation. Mm -hmm. There's healing. I mean, we know this. There's healing. So you're calling. You're calling. What God's calling you to. Part of that is, is calling you to embrace 
His divine healing in your life. You got there. Salvation involves uh, prosperity. Checks in the mail. It involves other. It, you know, it, yeah, yeah. That's right. If you listen, honey, if you got a bill to pay and you ain't got the money, you need to get saved. <laughs> now, what does that mean? I mean, I'm not right. With God didn't say that. I mean, you need God's. Uh, you need God's monetary salvation to come your way. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah, there. De deliverance. When you've got a hold, of, something's got a hold of you that, that you you no longer can control or say to go, come or go. Are you out there? Yeah. You can't. You hang up. You know when you've got a, 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 something that's got a hold of you because you know it. It you know, it ain't leaving, going home. Right. It went long after you're tired of it. It's staying around. You're out there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You go, well, I don't know that if I'm addicted to this or that. I said, well, if it won't go home, you're addicted to it. <laughs> when you no longer enjoy it and you still have to do it, you're addicted to it. Mm -hmm. When it's telling you what to do, instead of you telling it what to do, There was a big sign in, in, in uh, Chester, England. I was there one time a mobile, a wine shop. They don't have liquor shops in England. Or Britain. they have wine shops. They had a big sign across the beautiful sign that says, it says, wine is a good servant, but a poor master. Amen. Yes. In other words, that's what it's all about. You need deliverance. Something's done got the, the mastery over your life. And you need someone greater to help you lift that off of you. Amen. Are you there? Yeah. yeah. Come on. Deliverance. I mean, that's deliverance. Safety. Come on. If you live in a, if you live in a world like we're living right now, there is a, a very a, a, a lack of, of a feeling of security in the natural. Mm -hmm. You got the craziest folks that ever walked the face of the earth. Well, we know about them running around right now trying to kill you. Mm -hmm. Or want to kill you. You got people that live thousands of miles away that want to cut your throat, and you don't even know. That kind of makes you a little uneasy at times, doesn't it? So, if part if part of salvation is, is is divine protection, Psalm ninety one says this. You read the whole psalm. He, under the shadow of his wing, you're protected. He's gonna protect you. He's going to give you angels to have charge over you. Oh, thousand fall at your side. Ten thousand at your right hand. It will not come nigh me. Yeah. I'm not saying be stupid, but just have confidence that no matter what's going to happen, whatever comes on the earth, be in Him. Amen. I heard a prophetic word this morning from someone that said that they saw a vision of a flame coming to, a wick coming to the earth. And you're caught a fire. And, the, and the, the earth caught fire. And, and this fire went through the earth. And she heard, this is a woman, she said, she heard the angel say, get low. Get low. You know they say that, in fireman teach you that. Was it? Stop, hit, drop, the drop the rope. Yeah. The angel said, get low. She said, well, he heard it say, over and over, get low. Said, What's that mean? He says, stay humble. All right. All right. Say, pray. When something happens, instead of trying to get up and trying to figure out what's going on or try to get advice from some person, he said, first thing you need to do is pray. Right. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. Humble your what's humbling mean? It means you recognize you can't do it. Don't know why they can, but you, but you do know somebody. Amen. Are you out there? He wants yeah. you. He wants you. He wants to help you. Yeah. But if you're so full of pride that you won't listen to God when he tries to talk to you, and I know a bunch of folks like that. I'm never like that. <laughs> if you if you if you know the answers, you won't help you. That's why so much prayerlessness in the body cries is because there's so much pride. We know a lot of stuff. Pride puffs up. I mean, my knowledge puffs a person up. Come on. If you, if, I don't know about you. I I I like to. I like to spend time with the Lord. Now I developed that over you. But I know this, you know, even if I don't like to, I, I, I'm, I better <laughs> if I'm, I'm going to be able to function. 
And I don't seem to be getting any holier. Look at the little marks you people make. Yeah. Uh -huh. hey, you know what I don't, I don't seem to be getting help? It doesn't seem to be any easier for me on my own to do what's right. Now I know, I, I, I know more now. I know what's right and wrong. Mm -hmm. But to do it <clears throat> is, not, is no, it's even harder than it was long ago. By myself. But I have discovered this. I've discovered my calling. Mm -hmm. There was it we all we know you're a preacher. I saw that. I've discovered my calling that he has called, he's given me, he's issued a divine invitation Amen. to embrace his salvation. Thank you. That, 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 although I'm not, now I know what I should be doing and I, and I seem weaker in, in my ability to do it than ever. All right, my flesh won't, you know, but I, but I do know that, that he's invited me. He said, you need help. I'm inviting you. Embrace it. Are you out there? Isn't it great? Yes. That's the hope of your call. That means that no matter what, no matter what comes up, there's always, there's always your calling. He's calling. He, he, he issued that, he issued that, before the foundation of the world. It says it wrong, nobody it says it's right wrong. It says Henry called. He did he did predestined. And that word predestined doesn't mean it's just all set and fixed. Not Calvinism. It means that he designed it. He gave he he's got a design in, in play. He invited you. That means he's got a plan. And whom he, whom he, whom he gave, he dest, predestined, he, he justified. Amen. I mean, he made you right with him. Amen. And he said, whom he, he justified, he then also glorified. Mm -hmm. That means he's going to show up. Mm -hmm. The glory of God is the manifest presence. It's his heaviness. It's his tangibility in your life where you know God's there. I experienced a little bit of it this morning. I mean, come on, I wasn't having the faith nothing out. Yeah. But I, I mean, I had to come in faith. I had to get up in faith. I had to stand up here in faith. So again, going away with faith. But once, but faith brings you to a place of manifestation. Mm -hmm. And of glory. Are you still with me? So God's call, He said, He said, I'm, He said, I want you to understand the hope of your calling. So listen. Real quick thing, you have a situation. Give me an example. You've got a situation. It seems hopeless. You know this, that wherever there, there, there's hopelessness in an area of your life, not everybody, if you get totally hopeless, you wouldn't be here right now. You'd be dying, dying somewhere. Because without hope, you can't live. Yes. But the measure of hopelessness in your life is an indicator that there's a strong hope of the enemy. Because you can recognize a stronghold by this. There's always hopelessness. If, you, if you're in a job, you're in a job, and it seems to be what they call a dead-end job, and you just become hopeless. You know, if, you, if you keep on just hopeless, you know, there's no way I can get out of this. i got to do this. i got to do this. i got to do this. And the enemy then has got a stronghold where he can control you. He can tell you Boss says you got to work Sunday. You can't come to church. Listen, I'm just uh, listen. And you say, well, I got to do it. I, and there's no, I got to have this done. There's no way out of it. You're hopeless. And then all of a sudden, then the enemy's got to control over your life. I'm so tired. I can't. I can't work another hour. Boss said, you're in a dead end job. He says you got to work tonight. Well, I'm so tired. I ain't seen my family in weeks. You got to work. So what do you do? You work. Because you're hopeless. And the devil's got to help you. You out there? 
That's just an example. It could be anything in your life where you cannot make a choice of what you're going to do. Now, I don't mean you just want to lay in bed and sleep all day. Come on, I'm talking about laziness. I'm talking about you can no longer make a choice in an area of your life. Then there's a stronghold there, there's a hopelessness. But the good news is this. He's calling you. He, that's the Holy Spirit's constantly. Y'all listen to this. He's constantly calling you. He's inviting you. He's inviting you to what? His salvation. He's inviting you to his salvation. Come on, you know, we need to practically work this thing out. You, we're not worried. This ain't, you, just put this church up. Let's work this thing out. That means, that means in your life, no matter what comes up, God's always there. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Well, no matter what is, whatever comes up, listen, that God's always there to call you because you've got to call it. All things, Romans says, Romans 8 says, all things work together for the good, say good, good, good. of those that, are, that love God Amen. and are what? Called according to His purpose. Amen. you got to get, it, get, get, get your star hooked up with, with Jesus. I mean, come on, hook up to Him. You just say, you see, first the kingdom of God and all, and, and all these things that have Just forget about anything else, but just going for the kingdom. If you make a hard decision to go for the kingdom, that calling is there. And that calling will enable you to do what other people tell you can't do. And you will then begin to live a supernatural life. Supernatural life, not just plain in tongues and croakers. Of this fun. A supernatural life is being able to being able by the power of God to overcome whatever you face. Yeah. And didn't say it's easy. It's tough. That's why so few people, that's why Jesus said, many are called, but few are chosen. What's he talking about? You see? You've got to press into it. And not to, it's not easy. But it does work. You hold on to it. Good Lord, I thought you had two babies. <laughs> y'all get anything out of that? That was good. Yeah. Let's stand up. We'll go eat. Hope y'all got blessed so far. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and we didn't have we didn't have a community today because we're getting ready to have a community over there. So realize this about what Paul said to, to, to the body of Christ when they came together at the Lord's Supper. Y'all behave. <laughs> Is that clear? That's right. clear. Be sweet to people. Be nice to them. Man. I'm going to be nice to Jennifer tonight. She needs to be nice to them. Be fun. You go have to go eat and have, have a good time. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the day. We thank you that you brought us together as, a, as, a, uh, as your body, Lord. And you love us. And you desire the best for us. You called us to your salvation. And we answer the call. Say it with me. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I answer your call. I will take some of that. I'll take some of that. Take all I can get, Lord. Take all I can get, Lord. I need you, Lord. I'm going to get low. Because the fire's coming. I'm getting low and I'm going to make it. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, bless the, I thank you bless the food. Bless the time of fellowship, Lord Jesus. And, and let everybody just have a good time, Father. Thank I thank you. God. I know you want us to. We'll let you let us have a good time. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen.